Hey guys, Rob here and welcome back to ConjureCast. Yes, it has been way, way too long and I really apologize for that. It's probably been a few months since the last video and honestly, I've just had a lot going on. Um, I've still been skating, we've still been doing all of our Conjure stuff. But in my personal life, um, of course, I'm always busy with my career and my wife has been pretty unwell the last few months. She, uh, she had to go through a pretty heavy surgery and we've been working on that recovery and I've really been focused on taking care of her and just not really in the mindset to be doing all of this. Um, we've had a lot going on behind the scenes as far as Conjure brand and new stuff. So we're going to get to that uh, at the end of the video. I've got a cool announcement to make. Uh, but otherwise, I just want to get back into this. Um, so I've got some new products and some new stuff to go over, some new things that we're working on. Uh, today, what I want to go over, uh, one, a new setup that I'm putting together. So uh, if you guys recall kind of the last season of videos, I was really in the G-Boots USD 7 setup. And I really, really loved that setup, but ultimately I ended up blowing the skins out. Um, the way in which I fall is pretty consistent. I kind of drag my left front of my toe boot area in a consistent spot when I fall. And that just caused the skin to kind of disintegrate and blow out at the seam. I'm sure I could have it repaired and put back together. And the leather itself was was pretty pretty well still together. Just the, the seams had come undone. But unfortunately, I've been experiencing some issues with the uh, USD7 shell. Nothing with the shell specifically, but more so the sizing. So. I'm like a, a 275 millimeter foot and I squeeze down into the smaller 42-ish shell uh, USD7 and all around it feels really, really great, especially with the uh, MyFit crown liners. Uh, but lengthwise, I'm at the max and the what I'm experiencing now is because the foam and the toe and the heel of the uh, crown liners is starting to compress after you know at least six months of skating those liners now, there's not a lot of cushioning between my toe and that end of that plastic shell. And it's inevitable. You're gonna stub your toe or kind of slam your front wheel when you fall or you know clip a ledge or something like that. And every session now I'm finding myself banging the front of my big toes and bruising my toenail. This past weekend, I had a session uh, out at Lakeland Skate Park with uh, Sean Smith and uh, Tree Tree Rudolph and friends and I bruised both of my big toes uh, really really terribly to the point where it hurt to walk for a couple days and I'm sure I wouldn't be able to skate uh, this past week if I had tried. So I've decided to switch to an adult size skate. Um, in my sneakers I wear like a ten and a half. Uh, of course I don't need them fitted like I like my skates but that's kind of what my foot is looking for lengthwise. Um, before I had been in the USD 7s, I was in the Adapt uh, Customs, and before I was in the Adapt Customs, I was wearing the Seba SX2 shell, which is the, you know, the SX and the CJ style boot, except with a plastic shell. The benefit of the plastic shell over the carbon is that it is much more flexible, it just kind of fits better. I, I liked it over this SX boot. SX is a beautiful boot and I'm sure it's really, really great for like an FSK urban skating. Of course, slay, you know, put some uh, wizard frames on there and you are good to go. But I didn't like the way it felt for just basic aggressive skating. It didn't have the flex that I needed without really loosening it all up. And it was just too pretty of a boot to, to, to waste for something that I wasn't really into. The SX2 though, on the other hand, much more flexible, um, just felt good overall, so I liked it. Problem is that the last set I had was a 42 shell, which was about 200, at least advertised as 270 millimeters, which was a little short for my foot. It was an even, even fit, as my right big toe was literally to the edge, and um, it just wasn't working for me. It, it, everything else about it was super comfortable. I could skate well on them. My balance was good. Just, it was all great. But that one particular point hurt and it made me kind of cautious when I was skating. I was afraid to put my weight into my toes, if you, if that makes sense to you. So what I have decided to do is switch over to the size 43 shell. Um, it is advertised as two, I believe 275 millimeters. So an additional, um, maybe it's 
280. Anyway, it's, it's a little bit bigger than the 42 shell. It looks a lot bigger uh, on the foot so far, just kind of slipping my foot on. It definitely looks longer and slightly bulkier than the boots that I've been used to, um, but it fits well. So I wear kind of nice, uh, like premium, uh, thicker wool hiking socks. It, my foot fills the shell out just fine. I have just a little bit of length extra at the end, which is completely fine. That's really what I was looking for. Um, so I have high hopes for these. I'm still waiting on a part for them though. So we're gonna go over some of the other things that I'm incorporating into this setup. Um, some parts that have kind of been on the market for a while, as well as some parts that are brand new, a new brand that we're gonna take a look at here shortly. Um, if you recall to my last setup, I was using the custom King Souls for my USD7 G boot setup. And man, King Souls are the way to go. I mean, like you're gonna wait for a while to have them made and you're probably gonna pay a little bit more than a, like a, plastic, a pair of plastic stock plates. Um, I absolutely promise to you they are worth the wait, they are worth every penny and they will kind of spoil you for sole plates. That being said, Andrew is making me a fresh set for the Seba boots. Um, we are gonna be going with a Nylatron material, uh, a white sole plate this time, just to switch it up a little bit. And um, kind of in line with the, the recent versions that he's been looking uh, working on, if you follow his Instagram, uh, which we'll tag here, you can kind of see how his, his style and uh, the way he's making them and the, the way he's styling them and shaping them kind of evolves as he go along, as he's going along. And the, the current version that he's working with, I think is absolutely beautiful. It will really work well with this boot and I think it's gonna look great. And uh, another reason I decided to go with the white material and the, the nylon instead of UHMW is because I decided to try out or check out these new uh, Caltic V2 flat frames. And I actually picked up a pair of the limited nylon versions. So these are made, uh, they injected these with a, it's a nylon 101, which is just a good kind of like a raw uncolored. So this, this isn't necessarily white. It's more of like an off white and it's a slicker nylon material. So I believe it's a little bit harder. Um, at least it feels a little bit harder. And it's just, uh, it's got good kind of lubricative qualities and should slide really, really well. And um, I think it's gonna look cool with the Nylatron sole plates. They are not a pure white. They're also kind of slightly off white. And I think it will look great overall on this setup. Um, as far as wheels for these frames, these frames are rockerable up and down. It is a, I can't remember the, the offset that, that it is, but um, I'll put the numbers here. But I have them set up with the uh, Conjure Mini Flats 55s in the middle and the tougher wheels, uh, 64s on the outside, and it creates pretty much a perfect rolling flat setup. I am rolling it here, not applying any weight, and all four wheels in the upright position are touching. Of course, because the mini flats are a wider profile and the tougher wheels are a rounder profile, we get that magic rocker effect where when you tilt the frame, only the middle wheels are touching on edge. Um, of course, that wears out after, or wears in at least, after a, a few sessions or a few hours in them. But I think this is going to be a pretty cool configuration. The 55 millimeter uh, mini flats rocker down and out slightly gives me plenty, plenty of clearance. Lengthwise, these are pretty akin to the um, wish frames. So, I being a taller guy, you know, six one ish, I like a long frame under my foot so I can kind of lean front and back and have a little bit more stability. And these will definitely take care of that need for me. Um, height wise, they are more or less pretty close to the Wish um, H block as far as uh, your Royale angle. One thing that I'm going to do a little bit different, if you see the the groove along the top of the frame here. It's right around seven millimeters, and that's close to what we're gonna try and get the UFS groove in the sole plates at. So these will sink in as much as possible. The effect that I'm going for is I want to have this kind of like a low rider sunk down and set up, and I want a nice, neutral, easy Royale Farfingugan angle. I just don't want to bone over too far. Not that it's a struggle with the wish frames, for example, or anything else really that I've been skating. 
but it's just kind of nice to have that good like even 45 degree angle on your Royals. So I'm really excited to try these out. I think the combination overall is gonna be great. The frames themselves look really well made. Um, I didn't enjoy the V1 Caltech flat frames. It just wasn't really for me. I didn't like the shape overall. I really didn't love the groove and the material was a little bit soft for my liking, but um, this overall just seems like a completely different frame. So I have a good feeling about this. And of course, once I get into skating them, um, it's gonna be probably another week or so until I have the sole plates ready and then can skate these, but I'm dying to. And I will of course return back and let you guys know how that goes. Um, another thing I wanted to get into, I if you'd watched the Instagram page for ConjureCast, I had talked about some new hardware that we are gonna be checking out. So. Uh, my friend Marcus over in Germany has kind of started a new brand and it started with a necessity. He, um, he likes creating kind of cool custom setups and there's a severe lack of quality, quality hardware. Now we have hardware and such that we have good frames and wheels and all the other things that we can bolt onto the skates, but the, the screws and bolts and nuts and hardware that we use to affix things to our skates there's no real market or aftermarket for those specific parts. Now, certain brands you're seeing are starting to step up the, the caliber or quality of their hardware. If you take a look at the 50-50 balance frames, um, even 50-50 sells standalone their uh, axles. I think they call them super axles or something along that. They're beautiful, beautiful chrome, really, really high quality, high-end axles. They fit well, they've got a good locking thread. And I've upgraded several of my frames with the 5050 axles just because it's better than those standard black um, UFS marked, uh, you know, just standard uh, axles. So that's another, a, a cool example. Um, another example I've seen is with the new power slide skates, uh, the, the high-end stuff. So my uh, Tau carbon boot came with like a, a different type of uh, mounting screw. Instead of the standard hex key, which is, you know, you've, we've all stripped hex screws. It uses a star Torx bit and I really, really prefer that once I had started using it because you can really, really crank in there without any concern of stripping the hardware. And I think it looks good. It just, it's overall a better design. The trouble with that is if I'm out skating and I've got Torx hardware um, and I forget to bring a tool, nobody can really help me out unless they have a, a separate toolkit. We don't generally carry Torx bits with us because most of our hardware doesn't utilize it for now. Um, so this new brand from Germany is uh, called Save Inc. Save Incorporated, Save Undercore Inc. And um, basically high quality blade stuff is their tagline. Uh, we'll tag them here so you can check them out over on Instagram. And essentially what they are putting together are kits of hardware to upgrade your skates. So I think right now this first kit that he put together to send over to me is more of a universal kit. The idea is that um, there's pretty much everything here you need to outfit your skates, uh, such as the, the, the cuff hardware. So here we've got really, really nice washers and bolts that are kind of two part. And I will try and get a better camera angle on those so you can see how that goes together. The mid strap hardware, this is also another two piece with the washer on the outside to protect the screw. The buckles all have the nice hardware there. Even the UFS mounting hardware. Any, any of the hardware in your skates uh, that you need to swap out and upgrade, he's got it here. Black hardware, silver hardware. Now, again, I'm not sure if this is what the finalized product or at least one of the options are gonna look like, um, but really, really cool. Just all different pieces and parts to really, really make it work. Also includes with that the a nice adapter bit, which you can put in your electric cordless drill or just a screwdriver, which has a, an insert at the end for a regular replaceable bit and all the different Torx bits to go with that. Now, as far as the material, these aren't just standard cheap bolts that just happen to feature Torx bits. These are also high-end stainless steel, so it's much better quality material from the beginning. 
I don't know specifically what type of stainless it is because I just don't know about the different grades of stainless, but I will say that it is good stuff according to him and I believe what he said. Um, you know, Germans and their hardware and stuff. So it's uh, it looks really, really great though. Nice, clean threads. Everything went together super smooth when I assembled the skates. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about with this, and I hope it makes sense in how I'm trying to explain it. The, actually I can show you here. The way this cuff hardware works, it's a threaded screw that fits within a washer. So it's kind of like a, I dropped it, a countersunk washer and then a flanged bolt head. And the washer does serve to protect the hardware, but one thing that's really cool is that there's a little bit of flexibility as far as the angle of the bolt. So when you install these, essentially these cuff bolts into your cuff, that cuff bolt doesn't always sit perfectly perpendicular to the boot. So sometimes when you're screwing it in, the edge of the cuff bolt's kind of uneven against the side of the boot. This washer will conform to the angle of the skate and allow the bolt to still thread in straight. And I think that'll give you a little bit better fit on your cuffs and a little bit less of a possibility of it backing out because there's not one edge digging in and everything else just kind of floating. That was my observation. As I put them together, it just looked like a better fit how it bolted it all together. Um, another thing that's cool is the actual case that he's provided here. So he, there's a sticker on the outside. He also provided some cool additional stickers here. And within the kit, we have all the different little sections. There's the tools in the middle, different categories of bolts. Nice little foam inserts here to keep everything in place. And what's nice is that this kit, nice and lightweight, small, I can just stick this down in my backpack and then I've got a whole kit. You can throw extra additional hardware in here. There's plenty of room to put all kinds of stuff. And I'm the kind of person that when I'm out at the skate session, I like to have a whole little extra jar of hardware. My stuff breaks sometimes, my stuff falls apart sometimes, but usually when you skate with a bunch of people, somebody's gonna lose a bolt or a screw and it's cool to be able to just pull out what they need and give it to them and get them rolling again. So I'm really excited about this brand. I think there's a, a need for it. This is something that I would personally buy if it was available for me because I do think that the stock hardware that we're using on most of our skate setups is not that great. So this is a good upgrade for that. Um, I have no idea what the price point is going to be, but um, stay tuned. Uh, just you know, check him out on Instagram, and um, I'm sure you've seen him around on Facebook. And um, more to come from this, so I'm excited about that. All right, so that is my new setup. Not really much else going on with that. Um, bearings wise, I went with the 5050 bearings. They're just my favorite bearings. They are, they're not cheap. They're not expensive. They're just good mid range and good sealed bearings. So I don't have to clean them all the time. I just take them out, wipe them off, throw them back in. And when they start to sound crappy, throw them away and replace them. Because again, they are not that expensive. The last thing that I wanted to go over today is actually some Conjure brand news. Um, in between my last video and this video, we released the Conjure brand mini flats, which we talked about a little bit today. I never even made a video about that, and I apologize for that. Um, we we had fun uh, just kind of messing with a smaller wheel. There were a few different reasons we wanted to put that together. First, uh, there's not a lot of 55 millimeter options out there, and there are still some frames that would really work well with that in a flat configuration. So you've got your Volo slash Rosie's frames, which work pretty well configured flat. You've got your Create Originals frames and a few others that if you put a good 55 millimeter wheel in there, the 50-50 uh, balance frames as well, it will give you a little bit of clearance and kind of roll well enough. Obviously 55 millimeters is not a fast wheel and it is not just like a, a park blaster, but it's fun for street and it's fun just to kind of mess around in. It's got that good nostalgic 90s vibe because you remember wheels used to be pretty small for a few years there. Um, but we wanted to do something different. Um, we have limitations and I've spoken about this in the past as far as molds that are available to us. 
and we have uh, limitations as far as you know what what can actually sell and what's going to be feasible on the market and then at the core of all of what we do we have us and we want certain things and everything that we've ever made and produced from the first t-shirts that we made to when we were making those uh, wax deodorant dispenser sticks things that we personally needed or wanted to use and instead of just uh you know waiting for somebody else to come along with it or compromising for something that was close to what we wanted we make it ourselves so we have uh, now a few years now been producing wheels. We have a good re relationship with our uh, manufacturer, AEND Industries, which, which is uh, still based in California, though moving to Texas soon. I, I approached them kind of with uh, some ideas and some questions about creating a new wheel, a new profile uh, that was a little bit outside of the norm and doing so in a way that didn't require us investing huge amounts of money into new molds, et cetera. So what we've come up with is a 57 millimeter wheel, which is kind of still a mid range, good for, you know, regular flat frame setups, big enough that you can still get a good roll on it, small enough that you can have clearance. Um, but we have essentially developed in with AND a new profile, which is a essentially a narrow, faster profile with a Five or seven millimeter rolling flat surface. So what we're going to get here is basically like a slightly broader bullet profile that will feel a little bit more stable, wear a little bit slower. Um, I mentioned that it's 57 millimeter and the hardness is going to be 90A. Uh, we've had pretty good luck with the 90A wheels. It's just that good all around middle ground, good for street, enough grip for park. So we went with that again. <clears throat> Obviously I don't have the wheel here in hand to show you, but I'll have graphics associated with this that you can check out so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, for the color, you'll see that we went with a white core and nice purple urethane. Um, purple has been done in the past, maybe one or two times ever, but it's definitely not a common color and we don't want to make just common everyday stuff. So we went with a, a unique, interesting color that went along with the design theme. You see the uh, the dead astronaut and uh, space theme here. That's just a kind of a graphic that we've been working on for a while now, and it really went together well with all of this. So it's absolutely beautiful, and I love the way it turned out. Brian, uh, our art director and designer for all of the uh, graphics and wheels and stickers that, and shirts that we've been working with, uh, really, really, really killed this design and had a lot of fun with it. Uh, together, we just we. We really had a good time putting this one together. Overall, we have put some other things together with this uh, wheel, uh, including a whole array of really cool sticker designs as well as a t-shirt. <clears throat> so today is Saturday, uh, the middle of August, and next Friday it should be our pour date. So we are gonna launch a pre-sale this Sunday. Um, which we'll have all over the place, you know, Instagram and every place else. And uh, we're gonna have a pre-sale for the wheels. We're gonna do some packages as far as wheels and stickers, wheels and a t-shirt, as far as maybe like a eight wheels, sticker, t-shirt, bundle. You'll see, we'll make it worthwhile and it's not gonna be that long until the, until the stuff gets here. So figure about a week of pre-order and then shipping and getting everything, everything packed up should take us maybe just a few days. So probably like a week and a half until you guys are holding the new wheels and stuff. The stickers uh, are already here. Uh, we've got some really, really beautiful packaging for this. So you're gonna be blown away when you see that. And the t-shirts should be ready the same day as the wheels and you're gonna love those. They are a um, basically a half organic cotton, half recycled water bottle material. It is a thicker, softer than average uh, t-shirt, slightly longer cut, and I think you guys are gonna love the material. We checked out the stock, and this one is going to be just right. So um, that is it. We're gonna have the pre-sale going. Uh, we'll have lots of images and graphics uh, explaining all of it and showing you more what it looks like in the coming week or so. And I can't wait to get it out to you. Um, not really much else that I can think of going on. But uh, that's about it. So um, please stay tuned uh, for more ConjureCast coming up soon, as well as more Conjure brand news. 
I look forward to sharing, sharing some more new products with you soon. Um, we're gonna get back into the Sola frame. We've got the new Sola H blocks on the way. They should be coming here this coming week. So I hope to get back into the Sola frames. Um, maybe I can get my hands on the new mushroom blading big block frames. That would be cool to check out. And if there's anything else that you wanna see or new things that are out or out soon that you would like me to get into and show you guys, give you a closer look, please let me know. Just shoot me a, a message or drop me a comment below. Um, like and subscribe, throw me a comment, let me know how, uh, how I'm doing. And I promise to put more work into this. Um, more videos to come soon and uh, that's it. So stay tuned. I'm very happy to, to be back hanging out with you guys again. And thank you, thank you so much for your patience with me as I took a couple months off. I'll be back soon.